Despite Steph being in a career-worst shooting slump, the recently returned Clay missing over half the year, plus the number two pick from 2020 James Wiseman, along with Draymond still being out, let's look at how the Golden State Warriors have persevered through adversity. Aside from two all-star caliber shot creators in Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, the under-talked-about impact of backup center Professor Big Shot's Nemanja Bjelica, plus the explosive attack from both the young glove Gary Payton II and the rookie phenom Jonathan Kaminga, can't be overlooked. Over the last week, the Deep Dubs have taken down two top-five seeds in the Western Conference in the Utah Jazz, and most recently, the steaming Luka Doncic-led Dallas Mavericks. This video goes in-depth on how Klay Thompson and Steph are having their ups and downs, and also covers the Warriors' wild depth that's allowed them to cover up in the interim for the injured and previously injured players. Stick around for all that and more on the number two seed in the wild, wild west. Right quick, only 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. A breakdown of the gravity pulling effect that the Splash Brothers have on opposing defenses in the film room is coming up, along with the other major takeaways from Tuesday night. But there's one thing I can say for certain, following the Dubs blowout victory over the Dallas Mavericks, which is that Jonathan Kaminga needs to be in the 2022 dunk contest. Kaminga threw down some mind-blowing posters in the fourth quarter, which showcased the type of once-in-a-lifetime springiness that the kid's been putting on display all season long. Maybe the mere 19-year-old should get some consideration for one of the all-rookie first teams as well. Given against a West rival in the Red Hot Mavs, Kaminga showed up on a nationally televised TNT game by dropping a game-best 22 points, and resembled a bona fide future superstar in the process. The man's ability to drive off the bounce to the bucket with a handle on a string and then pop up for utterly ridiculous Kodak moment posters is already a serious weapon for the dubs. However, the upside in which Jonathan's showing off in terms of his perimeter skills combined with those hops, that's what actually gets your mouth watering, envisioning the type of two-way dominant player he can ultimately develop into. By merely observing his on-court impact for a few minutes, it quickly becomes obvious that Kaminga's combination of shooting, size, driving ability, and generational athleticism flashes shades of top superstars like Giannis, Durant, and LeBron, but moving on to the backcourt in Golden State. Infamously, back on January 9th against the Cavaliers, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson played in their first game together in 2021-22, a one-two punch whose reunification was two and a half years in the making. Having said that, at least on a consistent basis, it hasn't really felt like the Splash Brothers have ever genuinely been back. Ever since the Warriors' November 30th matchup against the Phoenix Suns, Steph's going through the most tumultuous shooting slide of his career. Since that game in the Valley, Steph's been on a downward spiral, both in terms of his shooting success, with splits of 38, 34, slash 89, and his scoring efficiency with a 53.4% true shooting percentage, which is 2.3 points below league average. Meanwhile, Clay's return has generated mixed results. While Thompson's displayed signs of his pre-ACL tear and Achilles ruptured self in terms of his premier spot-up slash catch-and-shoot expertise, along with his relentless off-ball movement, mid-range chops, and lockdown defense, it's clear his legs still haven't recovered from being out of action for nearly three seasons. An abundance of the former five-time All-Star shots have come up way short, a clear beacon that there's still problems with Thompson's lift and overall conditioning, which is of course understandable. Also, the man smoked a number of shots at the basket, in which he became accustomed to making pre-injury, another piece of evidence signaling to the fact that Clay's belief in his legs mentally still isn't at full strength. However, it has been refreshing to see zero shortage of confidence from Thompson in letting his shot fly from wherever. It's been a small seven-game sample size, yet Captain Clay's already letting 14 shot attempts go on average. He's taking 7.1 two-point attempts per game, which is two below his career average, and 6.9 three-point attempts, which is in line with his career average. I can't be as optimistic about his efficiency, as Thompson's 44% on twos is five percentage points below his typical output, and his 33.3% on threes is nearly nine percentage points below what he put up on average prior to his injuries. Two of Golden State's most talented offensive threats being in less than ideal positions in their respective careers simultaneously, 
hasn't done the team any favors. That's the main reason for why the Warriors have had an offensive rating of 109 over the 28 game stretch since the first Suns game, which is 24th best over that period. That last stat is exactly why the 38 point pounding over the Dallas Mavericks, a team fourth in defensive rating entering the outing, finally felt like the Splash Brothers were dictating the flow of the game with their collective force. And it wasn't due to Steph or Clay putting up noteworthy bucket getting performances, no matter if it was the pair sharing the court with one another, or one getting rest on the pine while the other fulfilled the role of being a vacuum for defensive attention, Golden State's offense stayed flowing all night long. That was illuminated by this sneaky possession out of halftime. It's not shown based on the TNT crew being a tad late, but the set starts out with something the Warriors haven't really tried before, which is placing the Splash Brothers as screeners in double ball screen action. The possession then flows into a Thompson down screen for Curry. Curry drawing two off the down screen leaves Thompson free on the pop. Steph puts the pocket pass in the perfect spot to his backcourt partner, who drills the long two. The exact same set was run by Golden State later on in the game, this time with Jordan Poole taking the role of Klay Thompson. Instead of Poole popping out toward the strong side corner, he relocates to the weak side corner, all while Steph utilizes the down screen to penetrate and enter the paint. The attention he draws opens up the weak side, with some assistance from a Kavon Looney pin and screen, Curry kicks it out to Poole, who drills the open three. The concept on your screen, which mostly involves Curry and Thompson directly together through multi-layered screening actions, is fairly rare. We've seen flashes of guard-on-guard -guard screens where Thompson slips the screen and flares out, banking on Curry drawing two defenders so Clay can be left open. However, the typical way in which Steph and Clay dominate on the floor together is with how frequently they open up opportunities for their other teammates. Curry's drawing of box and ones, traps, and spontaneous double teams is both legendary and notorious. But don't forget, Thompson also vacuums defenders away just because of the fact that he's involved in all sorts of down screen action. On this possession, stay locked to not only Thompson, but to Curry. The biggest bait for the opposing defense is Kaminga's slight screen and slip toward the rim, as John plays off Thompson drawing two around the down screen in order to dive without obstruction. Simultaneously though, Steph moves himself to the strong side, aka the right side, and eliminates his individual matchup from becoming the low man on the weak side, who can help on the Kaminga cut, which makes the rookie's job much easier. Theme of the night though from both Curry and Thompson was how they found ways to kickstart and drive the engine of the offense despite struggling to find consistent shooting strokes themselves. Looking at the on slash off court numbers, and they give you an indication that the Curry-Thompson duo together on the floor is picking up where they left off. In 108 minutes on the floor together, the Splash Brothers have outscored their opponents by 13.6 points per 100 possessions. A big factor to that success is due to Curry and Thompson's teammates thriving with two floor warping all-time greats on the floor, and not necessarily due to the two of them having excellent individual shooting and scoring performances. On most nights, especially come the postseason when things get tight defensively, that won't always be the case. Eventually, Curry's gonna break out of this funk, Thompson's gonna recapture that pre-injury flow, but in the meantime, they'll continue to find ways to get their teammates involved in as much offense as possible. Last night against Dallas, Curry had seven dimes, most of them through attracting attention around down screens and your run-of-the-mill traps and hedges around ball screens. But the possession that caught my eye was this hockey assist by Curry. An Andrew Wiggins screen forces Luka to switch, then a give-and-go pitch against Kevon Looney forces Porzingis into the action. Curry penetrates against Porzingis, drawing low man help away from the weak side corner, and leaving Maxi Kleba as the lone defender splitting the difference. Curry kicks it out to Wiggins, who then swings it to Otto Porter Jr. in the corner for a three. The biggest beneficiaries of this historically impactful defensive attention drawn by the Splash Bros are the players who were picking up the slack when one half of the all-time best backcourt tandem was absent. The Warriors rank number one in the NBA in assists, and aside from Curry, Clay, and Dre, 18 of those dimes per game come combined from Igudala, Poole, Wiggins, JTA, Belly, Looney, and Automatic. All the headlines and gossip is going to be about the return of Curry and Thompson being on the court once again, but without Clay, it was the potent perimeter scoring guards in Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins who filled in for many of the typical offensive actions that Clay usually fulfilled. 
for helping out Curry with momentum swinging buckets all season long. A ton of respect goes to Air Canada, Andrew Wiggins, and Deadpool, Jordan Poole. But when will Curry break out of this slump? Best answer in the comments earns next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is West Burbs Tally, who says, I think the Bulls are scary for whoever they face. They still have a lot of pieces out, but still winning games. Losing Derek Jones Jr., Lonzo Ball, and Alex Caruso really hurts this Bulls defense. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.